Okay, so just in case I don't, I'm not able to do a uh, live feed in the uh, in this meeting, which I may or may not be able to do. What did you have for lunch? I have had nothing for lunch. Um, I'm going to bring this camera and just put it on a regular channel, as in I'll just sneak some footage on that. It's on drone flight and scouting with drones on deer, so should be pretty interesting. Uh, maybe you guys won't find it interesting. I find it rather interesting, and uh, hopefully uh, it goes well. But anyway, I got to talk to Teresa. I'll see you. When we do a mapping, we got to get a lot closer to get 80% overlap. We don't need much more than 20% overlap on this, so we'll spread it out. And then as soon as they get out and start seeing deer that are coming out deep, then we'll do a mapping. We're going to go up with the IR camera and look for some deer. Breaking protocol. <laughs> Before every time up. <laughs> did he calibrate it? <laughs> we did calibrate since we got here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We did test flights as soon as we came. We got okay. all our elevations point correct. Up, point up. Yeah. Dip, dip, dip. I had one. I didn't calibrate it often. And it went. Oh, that's a nice quiet one. All right, so I'm going to explain a little bit as to what's going on here. Uh, this is an I infrared IR camera, and if you see the little white dots that are out in the uh, in the screen now in the lower left side of the screen now to the right those are deer they show up as white dots now this is less than I don't know 300 yards from where uh, this meeting was taking place uh, the the weird thing about deer is that here in in New Jersey they'll damn near walk right up to you unless they've been shot at or threatened by a dog or some other uh, harassing thing they they're really they don't care I mean right now there's probably 10 deer in my yard but this is a soybean field and uh, it's in the corner they had come out and those white dots are actually quite a few deer now the drone is flying over and you can see they're pretty close together there goes one splitting off and so you got one, two, three, four, five, six deer there. And they're not running because of the drone. I don't think they are. Uh, they told me that they weren't. But uh, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So mama, papa, and a bunch of little babies, you know. Um, the deer weren't really out this night as thick as what I have seen them in the past. What we're going to do is we're going to do the front area here and we're going to video record it. Okay? Um, we went to a meeting with the Eco Preserve, which is represented by the Mapping software to do it. So, battery. So um, we're actually controlling the gimbal by hand. Um, we're going to give it a down sweep of 23 degrees. And most of it's corn back there, so I don't know what we're going to find back there, but we're going to go take a look. Okay, so, now the deer, like I said earlier, the deer are not out tonight. It is pretty early in the evening, and this is when deer usually start heading to the fields uh, if they've been shot at. Now, I know the farmers that farm these fields have a permit, and they've probably taken a few plugs at them. They are leaving the property that we are on, and they're heading about a mile away. This drone will go 21 miles away from here. Uh, the reason they only want to go 21 miles is because in that 21 miles, they have to come back 21 miles, which is 42 miles, which uh, he only has a half an hour worth of battery. So that'll give you the, the, the amount of speed that this thing has. So 21 miles out, 21 miles back is 42 miles. Um, yeah, so he can really boogie with this thing. Anyway, so he's, he goes out and he's flying over the woods and stuff to get to the fields of corn. Now, this, if you know, IR, infrared, runs off of heat. 
a deer has a very interesting heat signature. It's rather unique. I think it's, um, don't quote me, but I think it's 104 degrees, which is higher than a, a cow at 98.6, the same as a human being. Uh, she, maybe it's 101 degrees. It's some weird number, but uh, it's, it's a higher temperature than most anything else. Now, you can see the house. There's a lot of heat left in the roof of the house that he's flying over. Uh, you'll see the roadways are showing up quite white because of the heat from the day. And the sun has literally just set 10 minutes before he takes off on this flight. So he's flying over houses. He's flying over roadways. This is actually airport road. He's headed towards a small airport. And there was an airplane that came in. And you may see that on the screen. It says incoming aircraft or other areas that has sensors for the aircraft. So he is, he should be making a right. Yep. And now he's there. If you saw on the lower left hand screen, you can back up. Uh, there were deer. There's, you can see the white spots that are out there uh, when he points down. Now, corn will mask a deer. And this is all corn that he's about to fly over. And when he gets oriented, and gets his gimbals in the right position, uh, he will, you will look down the rows of corn and you'll see them start to emerge in white on in the fields. Now, if he flies a little to the right and the corn is, there are picket fences out there. I mean, those corn will actually uh, block that heat signature and then you'll lose them. I found it really, really quite interesting as to how many deer he was able to um, spot with this thing and it was quite amazing and I don't know uh, you you just probably for every deer we saw there were five or six in there and you know if it was two days earlier before we had a rainstorm he would have literally seen hundreds upon hundreds of deer now, hold on a second here I'm gonna throw this other one up on there and get it going again um, I have to edit that but okay so now there's deer in the corner they're just leaving the field or the, the the woods there they are in the right and you can see in the lower right hand screen that is the actual color so you can see that it is quite bright outside still and uh on the lower right hand corner of the screen the television screen so it's not really nighttime it's not really very cool but this camera which is eight thousand dollars by the way uh, and it will fit on a Typhoon uh, H or 520. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty much done with Typhoon. I can't seem to, you know what? I can't say that. I had problems with the Typhoon and I believe they're probably my errors. Um, I'm just totally disgusted with the damn thing at this point in my life. So I may purchase another one. I'm not sure. Uh, and, and just do what I can do with it. They do have a night vision camera that I can put on there. But uh, you're going to see now he's going through the cornrows. He is going with the cornrows. And every once in a while, you'll see a little white blip. And we pointed it out to him that they were there. And then he, the, the pilot would stop and, uh, uh, you know, kind of zoom in on him and move the drone right to left. And then you could really pick him up. Uh, so it's difficult to see. It's probably more for when the corn is uh, actively growing and it's small. Uh, you know, so you can see there's one in the power line. There it is in the woods right there in the upper center center um, of the screen. It's in the woods through the trees. So they're there. You can see more of them down on the power line uh, there below at the at the opening of the tree. There's a deer trail there that we pretty much determined was there. And uh, yeah, so to me, this technology is still in its infancy stage or there's one there they are so they're out in the cornfield there i see three or four right now he's in the he's following them along with the rows and there you see them popping up and you can see them in the woods so they're just really now coming out now there's another one up in this screen and there's two more there <laughs> and there's a lot of deer out here and it actually there's a lot of deer that are on their way to these fields now Mind you, it is now, it, that was on the 4th of October, and it's, you know, it was on the 4th of October, and uh, it's still pretty warm out, and it's still daylight out, as you can see in that lower right-hand part of the screen. So, there's one right along the road, 
Uh, you can see more there. He's panning by really quick. I think the pilot could use some more practice personally. I uh, don't know that he was doing the most awesome job, but he did okay, I guess. But anyway, I guess that's it. I will continue to talk after this ends. There's the aircraft in close proximity, that red banner that came across the screen on, on the, uh, on the uh, vid at the end of the video there. Uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, all I can say is, what do you do with this information? You know, do you present it to the state of New Jersey in a lawsuit? Uh, that's what he was saying. Uh, this guy actually owns a hobby store in Flemington or Ringo's, uh, outside of Flemington, between Flemington and Ringo's, where the old police station was, like 30 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, uh, you know, what do you do with this information? Uh, is it something that we could use, like, before we go hunting? You know, it's like, okay, let's put the drone up, fly out see where these deer are, and then we will coordinate our hunts uh, according to what we see. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, or is it something that we would just do purely to say, here, Division of Fish, Game, and Wildlife, you have X number of deer per square mile, and that's unacceptable. You need to do something. And after the flight was done and they landed his drone and he can do this in pitch black it doesn't matter he doesn't need to be he doesn't need to have uh lights or uh, daylight his license allows him to fly 24 7. Uh, i have a license to fly one of these things also just not commercially uh, the commercial license is like getting a helicopter license a literal helicopter license is very difficult um, but I do have a recreational one that I can use for my own personal use, like flying around, taking photos of my own stuff, uh, but I can't do it for someone else. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, I've been through the deer program for many, many years, many, many years, and been to many, 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 uh, uh, yeah, meetings on what to do for deer. And whatever a farmer suggests is unacceptable to the Division of Fish, Game, and Wildlife. It just is. There's nothing that they are, they're not willing to do anything. Uh, they want that hunting license money, which is fine. I mean, that's how they've done business for X number of years, nearly 100 years. I think the Division of Fish, Game, and Wildlife in New Jersey was uh, uh, put together in the 1920s or 30s, you know, so we're getting close to 100 years. Uh, but that's the status quo. Now, the the problem that I see with the Division of Fish, Game, and Wildlife um and hunting is that it's too expensive for a family to go hunting uh, anymore here. If you were to buy a hunting, a resident hunting license from every season and all the permits to do what you need to do, it's nearly $500 for each permit. So as a father, if I want to take my son's hunting, like I have, um, I had three, you know, um, when, Tim and Joe and Peyton were young. I took them hunting. I was, it was fortunate that it was on the farm and it didn't cost me anything uh, to, to take them hunting other than shotguns and shells. Now, just for the licensing for me, if I was going to take my boys hunting on a farm that wasn't ours, the home farm, it would have been four times five. You're looking at two thousand dollars. That's not including the orange, the, you know, the 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 clothing, the boots, the the shotguns, the shells, and all this stuff. I mean, it, it's a very expensive sport. I mean, each shotgun, no less than three hundred bucks. You know, if you're going to buy them a cheap pump shotgun, so three, six, nine, twelve hundred dollars there. So you're looking at thirty two hundred bucks for that shotgun shells buy them each two boxes that's 10 rounds you know just because i like to go into the woods with a lot of ammunition so uh each box of shotgun shells you're looking at probably eight to ten dollars depending on what kind you get so ten dollars a box so you're looking at twenty dollars there each one 20 40 60 80 you know another 80 100 dollars there you know I, some maybe want slugs and shotgun buckshot you know that sort of thing Chuck, it's very, very expensive, and uh, there was a, a member of the Farm Bureau there, two members of the Farm Bureau there, and uh, the one guy, of course, he recognized me and wouldn't touch me with a 10-foot pole because of some of the videos I've done on the Farm Bureau where I uh, pretty much called them useless idiots because they're just a lobbying group that collects money from 
us and uh, do nothing. Uh, I'm sorry to have to say it, but they sit down in Trenton and wear a suit and a tie and they get money to do nothing. They, they really are not doing anything for us. Uh, and of course, the reason I say this is because I've been through the mill. I've been through the programs. I've, I've heard these guys say, well, this is going to be really easy. We'll get legislature passed and boom, we're done. Because the Farm Bureau is the farmers lobbying group, but they do nothing. And like I heard it again the other night and I was like, you know what, why don't you get some more smoke to blow up my ass? I know they're not going to do anything. They're just there to appease us so they can continue to receive that paycheck. And I talked to the one guy for quite a while. He was in the technologies and, uh, you know, side of it. So he wasn't really working with farmers. He just thought that that was really cool. But he's the guy that does the computers and the printers and makes sure everything is working smooth within that office. And, uh, you know, he's a nice guy, hell of a nice guy. I had a good conversation with him. But the guy that's actually the head of the Farm Bureau down there, well, he wasn't the head of the Farm Bureau because I know the head of the Farm Bureau. He used to be my insurance agent, hell of a nice guy. And if any of them were going to do something for us, it would have been him. But, you know... But you pay your farm bureau dues to get to you pay your farm bureau dues. It's like two hundred bucks a year, one hundred and eighty or two hundred dollars a year and 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 then to be let down year after year after year. I'm forty six years old. I've paid this bill for over twenty years, uh, you know, to Farm Bureau, and I have never received or felt that they were doing anything of any value for us. So anyway, with that being said, I'm going to end this video because, well, it needed to be ended, and uh, we'll see. If they get money allocated, they need to. Uh, it needs to be put into the hands of farmers. Um, I, I honestly think that the money that, that, that would be handed out would go to bounties, to hunters, to shoot does. So, because there's no incentive to shoot a doe. These guys are buying bait. They're putting up deer stands. They're spending five hundred dollars for the licensing, and another probably five hundred dollars for their shotguns to a thousand dollars for a shotgun. Uh, they don't go in the woods with pump shotguns, man. They're full auto, you know, or semi-automatic, and uh, uh, you know the fanciest of the fancy. They've been to Cabela's. They spent two grand there before they go every year, and blah blah blah. So they don't want to shoot a doe. But if you can, if you got the incentive to get some money back. You take that doe to a check station or you photograph the doe with a time stamp and your license and then a check comes in the mail for 20, 30 bucks and you get some money back. That would be cool. Uh, but we all know that the government doesn't like handing money back without getting their hands in the cookie jar. So I doubt that that would work either. But if they put it into the hands of a farmer entity or a cooperative that is run strictly by farmers, like the Anti-Deer Cooperative of New Jersey, and uh, we actually investigated the uh, that they actually were shooting does instead of tagging the same doe. Uh, time after time, then yeah, I think that that would work. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more.